Hi, it's Dawn Richardson, author of Journey to the Heartland, a spiritual memoir on life and the desire for it. And I've just come in from a walk and want to share a passage with you today in honor and celebration that uh, this was just named uh, as one of the top 10 inspiring books by Aspire Magazine, so uh, by visionary authors like me. So I hope you enjoy. I'm going to share today about um, my journey to, or my visit to Cleveland, which is about halfway through my month-long journey to the heartland. And I'm going to start in the middle of the chapter that's entitled Sower and Reaper, Catharsis and Communion. So to set the stage a bit, I was early uh, to Cleveland, and so I went downtown and I found the Art Museum, which was fabulous. Uh, and they had an exhibit uh, by my favorite artist, Vincent Van Gogh, uh, called Repetitions, and it was a series of paintings that he painted more than once, and it was fascinating. Um, but what was uh, just, I treasured most of all, is that I really felt like Vincent, like, literally showed up and was there with me. Um, it was just a, a beautiful, beautiful experience. It really was a catharsis for me and also a communion. And so I'm going to pick up about halfway through the chapter, and I'm going to put my glasses on so I can read clearly getting old. <laughs> okay, so the guide reminds us of how quickly we have been to cast the artist and the man in the oversimplified light of crazy. At one point, I am overcome with such emotion, I have to leave the room. When I take my place back with the tour group, it is as if Vincent is standing right alongside me. I feel his presence distinctly. He is right there, strolling through this exhibit whistling in my ear, drawing me into waves of knowing I am ill-equipped to capture on this page. Who knew when I had set out that morning that today I would find a new level of healing and that Vincent would meet me on the way along this journey to my heartland? Focusing again on the tour, I catch a summary of all Van Gogh said in his letters, the, the ones he left behind. I know it so well. The desperation for relief, the setbacks, the deep well of a desire to bring forth something of meaning and value, the questions that remain unwritten but bleed through between the lines of reaching for some way out and through. The tears I shed when reading his letters to Theo and those I spill here in Cleveland are for him and for me. For all that had been lost for him and for all I yet hoped to find beneath the starry skies. I gaze into his sad but smiling eyes and know we are two kindred spirits, more than a hundred years apart in time, but yoked by a single desire to live fully, to create from the heart and soul. On the verge of slipping away, like the crows disappearing into the summer field Van Gogh would paint, I once wrote a poem entitled, The Suicidal Birds Make Their Way to Me. The poem had been inspired by a bird that flew straight into my car windshield on a day when I was driving to the county mental health office to wait my turn for the prescribed medication intended to alleviate my symptoms. Instead, it only dulled me to the beauty I found here. Somehow, I survived the heat of the sun and the birds that came cackling, flying with a fury into the, my, my best laid plans. Vincent was not so fortunate. Van Gogh painted, he said, out of gratitude, and to leave some souvenir in the shape of drawings or pictures behind. A month before his death, many scholars believe, by his own hand, Van Gogh painted wheat fields with reaper. It hangs right here, three feet in front of me, and I am drawn into the sadness and somehow, simultaneously, held in a grace. The sower and the reaper have long been archetypal representations, symbols of birth and death. The museum placard captured Vincent's own words from 1889. I then saw in this reaper a vague figure struggling like a devil in the full heat of the day to reach the end of his toil. I then saw the image of death in it, in the sense that humanity would be the wheat being reaped. So if you like, it's the opposite of that sower I tried before, but in this death, nothing sad. It takes place in broad daylight, with a sun that floods everything, with the light of fire gold. Van Gogh spoke often of his deep love for humanity and this world, and the pain of having that love die within him, unrecognized. A great fire burns within me, 
but no one stops to warm themselves at it. The passers-by see only a wisp of smoke. He believed the longer a person looked at things, the more and more that one might tap a pool of meaning. That And Vincent was in it with all his heart. People suddenly caught on when he was gone. Within two decades of his early death, forgeries were popping up everywhere. Suddenly, the world of art and the world at large understood what it had lost. I make the drive to my friend's apartment where I am thrilled to have a view out the sliding glass doors that lead onto her balcony from the sofa bed where I will sleep. In the night sky, I find the heavens paying tribute. In the dark skies beyond the evergreen, stars are swirling, gathering up in a dance of love and light. I look into them deeply and drink them up as if it is my first communion, then raise my hand to the glass as if to offer a salute across the ages and through the light of fire gold. So that was from journey to the heartland. I hope you will read it. And if you do, please um, leave me an honest review on Amazon or let me know what you think. And most importantly, I invite you to come to life and live in full expression in your own unique way by rising up to greet the new dawn and by joining in to the mystery of the dance of your life. I'll see you next time. I'll share another excerpt in a day or two. Take care.